Molly tries whole animal butchery. Mark. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh yeah, we were in another episode. Oh, I did great. Uh, I we yeah, agree. we both won on this one, I think. We're all winners, but only one person can get a prize, so. Molly, you won. This is some weird crossover shit right now. Open up the gift. It's Am a I learning fish about head. oysters? There's nothing in here. Oh, there's something. You're number one. Open it up. I am, I am. Follow the tracks. Go to the 24th floor at 2.30 p.m. Like the train tracks? I'm lost on that one. <laughs> oh. Literal tracks. Little hooves. Pink hooves. I'm scared of someone jumping out at me. Is that really what you're supposed to do? Like little kids are supposed to do that? Meet the expert. Meet spelled M-E-A-T. I still don't know what we're doing. We're working with pigs, probably. I know where we are, that's for sure. We're at the Green Grape. I think I know who's gonna be here, and I'm very excited about it. Lena! Molly! Ah! Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm so excited to work with you. I can't you believe excited? we're doing this. This isn't just like a random butcher. This oh, is my dear serious. friend, Lena. Hi, everybody. My dear, sweet, sweet Lena was there. Lena used to date Nora. My mother and Nora's mother went to high school together. So I became friends with Nora, and then at the time, Nora was dating Lena. So we all became friends. Point is, she's an old friend. What we're gonna do today is whole animal butchery. Okay. You excited? Yeah. I was given a lot of presents. It's a trotter. That is so gross. A bunch of clues and taken on a wacky scavenger hunt. I have to go on a time crunch. Learn all there is to know about. Oh. Whole animal butchery. I've never done it. Like, what's that? That is the kidney. Okay. And, uh, Let me wash my hands. Yeah. Do you guys always work with whole animals here? Yeah, we receive a whole steer and a half, sometimes two steers a week, a couple of pigs, and three to four lambs. That's okay. what we do here. Should we talk about the primals? So we've got four on a pig. Wait, I think I know what the primals are. Shoulder, hand, and then the loin. The belly, is that a primal? It is, that's it. Primals I would say are like the main sections. And then you break down from within sub -primals. that. And then the shoulder becomes two subprimals. The top part is the butt and the Boston bottom. butt and the pic picnic. Very good, yeah. picnic camp. And the Boston butt, do you know why it's called the Boston butt? No. Uh, there's two theories. Okay. The first one is that when they traveled over on the Mayflower, they put these pieces of pork in butts to Boston. Okay, so that's how they ship them, maybe? Okay, what's the other one? When you shoot a gun, the butt of the gun hits you on the shoulder. Oh, that makes sense. A certain amount, of, although don't pigs know. don't shoot guns. First, let's remove the trotters. Yeah. You're going to take one of these bony knives, as firm as you can, like this. I'm not weird about dead animals okay, or okay. butchery. I hope people aren't squeamish because this is a reality of like being a meat eater if you are one. You're gonna find the joint. Yeah. You're gonna slice like this. People do this all day long in order to put food on your plate, so you better deal with it, folks. You don't wanna cut bone. You just wanna release a tendon with the tip. You can move it too if that helps you, like it's just knowing where the tendons are. Okay, trotter one. And then trotter two. You gotta come up above this elbow and we're gonna come down and across. Watch yourself, you don't wanna stab yourself, right? We gotta get rough with it here. Okay, well, I think I can finish that off. So now, we're gonna remove the shanks, also okay. known as the hocks. Use this saw on this. Because you're going through bone here. Yeah. Go, go. I'm doing it. Harder, you gotta, you gotta get that shoulder in there, Molly. Yeah! Oh my god. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> Actually, 
I have to think. Sawing through bone is not easy. It takes a lot of strength. First of all, I don't saw things often. I'm not like a big sawer. I was kind of trying to be like, <gasps> like really going at it. And then you get like really out of breath and your muscles are tired and you're exasperated. But if you make longer, more forceful movements that aren't so like cardiovascular, you can get your way through the pig without exhausting yourself. There you go. Dude, <laughs> do you have like one really jacked arm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we're gonna remove the hind shank from the ham. If this were a steer, this would be like where you would be getting your osobuco from, right? Okay. At a certain point, any of those like four-legged creatures, like a pig, like a cow, like a lamb, have relatively similar anatomy. The next thing we're gonna do is release the belly. Perfect. And so learning how to break down a pig, there you go. Would really inform how you break down any number of other four-legged creatures. Cut the kidney off. And just so you know, the hanger stake usually hangs right behind the kidney. All animals have hanger stakes. So what we're going to do now is release this leaf lard. Have okay. you ever worked with the rendered leaf lard? Yeah, it's just lard. Like your grandma's yeah. Crisco, Yeah, basically. yeah, like biscuits, like old school like, like baking. This one doesn't have as much as it can. You can use it to use a knife and relief. There you go. There you go. Yes. The pork fat is such a great moisturizer for your hands. Great. So I'm gonna have like beautiful skin. After yeah, exactly. This. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna remove the shoulder. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. I did it. Perfect. So now we have the shoulder, which we are gonna to put to the side. I wanna teach you how to remove the bavette, also known as the sirloin flap. And it connects itself to the last rib bone to just under the butt area of the tenderloin. What was cool working with Lena was she was then able to kind of like go further within each of those cuts and help uncover the smaller, as she calls them, little gems or prize cuts. Cuts that maybe like you associate with a cow but didn't realize are on the pig also. And she knows where all of those are. And those are all in her butcher case. And that sirloin flap, also known as the bavette in beef, is this muscle underneath. Okay, there is your tenderloin in there. So now you have the tenderloin. So now what we're gonna do is saw. And remove the ham. Oh She's struggling, folks. You're just rougher than I am. Just gotta get it in there while we That's what you're gonna get. And now, knife, tip, down. Ham. So now the sirloin, the love handle. Crap. Perfect. If this were beef, ribeyes. Yep. New York strips. Uh-huh. Yeah, ponytail. Ah, Lena, how am I doing? Oh my god, you're doing so well. Really? So much better Are you than. Just saying that? No, no, you oh, got it. I did it. Perfect. You nailed that, right? So that's your pork chop. Let's separate the loin from the rib loin. Yeah. You have the belly. Do you like a meaty spare rib? I like a meaty boy. Spare ribs. And then now we're going to have you separate the pork butt and the picnic can. There you go. Keep on. They're brittle. Almost perfect. You have to be strong to be a butcher. Picnic ham, bust and butt. You see here, we want to stay as closely as you can. Oh geez. We're separating the copa from the Denver. The Denver is also known as like the boneless chuck short ribs. I'm just gonna do this really quickly for you because it's okay, so then easy. I'm just gonna watch this. Okay, here you have the tongue. I love tongue. I feel like it's like nature's mortadella. Oh. Natural mortadella. And the cheek, you want to make sure you get under there. Cheek. This is your jowl. You could turn into guanciale. Sorry, little guy. Thank you for your service. Just to go over it again? Yeah. Go. Trotter, tongue, cheek, jowl, head, picnic ham, Boston butt, which we broke out into the Denver, mm -hmm. four shank, spare ribs, belly, rib chops, loin chops, tenderloin, What's this? Sirloin. Sirloin. It would look like this. So you sell those at steaks, pork steaks. Yeah. All right, what else? Ham, hind chain. Ham hock. Ham hock. Correct. And then we have the sirloin flap or something? Also known as the bavette. Bavette. What yeah. I learned is that I don't know a lot about the anatomy of a pig or any animal for that matter, and that's so crucial. And we only had a couple of hours to do this. I have not mastered this. I've got this for you. Okay. <laughs> 
Choose your cuts. You have two hours to cook at least two prize cuts from what you just butchered. The prize cuts are the jemmies, the little gems. Something that's like hidden, it's not something that you would often find. Where the off cut for me is like a trotter, a tongue, and a kidney. So you're taking the Denver. Yeah, Denver and Bavette. I'm gonna grill that. Is there anything that would cook uh, similarly? You get the car waiting outside, girl. I'm stressed. Sorry, I'm starving, so. It's okay. I'm gonna get some stuff to marinate with. The show's gotten very casual. It's just like, here, have a clue. <laughs> Bring home the bacon. Shop for what you need and earn your time. What does that mean? What are some pigs used to forage for? Truffles. Bam, 45 seconds. Okay. Why is it called the pork butt? When you shoot guns, the recoil hits you in the shoulder, butts you in the shoulder. We'll accept it. Do you know what a hog's head is? Like the head of a hog? It's a unit of measurement. If there are 32 gallons in a barrel and one and a half barrels in a hog's head, how many gallons are in a hog's head? 32 plus 16 is 48. Correct. Okay, hit me with the next one. What does porky pig in it mean? What? What does porky pig in it mean? No idea. Never heard that phrase in my life. Sporting a t-shirt with no pants, sans underwear. Example, I never left the house. Spent the day porky pig in it. I got plenty of time. All right, ready? Okay. Go. Come on. I'm gonna get some chili oils. Hey, Lena, do you guys have chili crisp? Mm, I don't think so. That's new. That's like a new gojujang chili paste. That's like Is it good? Um, I like it. Okay, yeah. let's taste it. And then really into the lot. Oh, here. I love this brand. Okay, okay this I have to go. I'm going to time so crunch. Good. Thank you. See ya. Cilantro. Thank you. Maybe some scallions. Ooh, should we make some lettuce wraps? Love a lettuce wrap. Is anybody else friggin' freezing? No comment. We'll take one fancy vinegar, just in case. Okay, I have all my things. What the hell is this? It's a trotter. <laughs> that is so gross. Okay, number five. We, we, we all the way home. We're going to my house? That's where my home is. Test kitchen? Yeah, we go. Okay, well that's not where I live. Okay, we're back. This is the Denver. We're gonna try cooking this kind of like hot and fast. And then this is the Bavette, the sirloin flat. And then we have the tri-tip, which has like a nice fat cap on it. So awesome. And then these are sirloin steaks. So what I wanna do is do like the same marinade on all of them and then grill them all, see what we like, what we don't like. Cause this could be a cool way to use cuts of pork that are just like not the popular, like iconic ones like pork chops, which pork chops. Pork chops are kind of tough and they're very thick and it's very hard to get them properly seasoned without brining them and leaving them like overnight. And I just think that's a waste of time. I was thinking instead of just having like lots of steak, it'd be nice to eat these like with stuff. And I oftentimes will just make like a big spread of lettuce wraps, almost like bosom style. We can test that with all of the different cuts here. I'm gonna make a marinade for these and then I'm going to get my rice on and then we'll like set up the whole assemblage and then we'll go grill everything. Sounds like a plan? Okay, so fresh garlic. Gojuchang is a fermented pepper paste. I would say mildly spicy usually, very thick, a little bit sweet and pretty like pungent and funky. Mm. It's almost sticky. Yummy one. So rice vinegar, fresh ginger, a little bit of light brown sugar, a little bit of salt, some oil. Mm, it's a beautiful color. And obviously we want to season all of these steaks before they get cooked, so. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure these are well coated all over. So we've got the tri-tip and the sirloin over here, and we have the bavette and the Denver over here. Actually, Brad, oh. oh, do you have anything that you might want to donate to my cause? Let's take a walk. Okay. We're in bad shape, really. This is, it's, it's kind of old, but That's this is like, old. um, yeah. You made your own? Yeah. 
great. We can use this as a little sauce afterwards. I got miso. What is this? I got some. These are old. They're like um, preserved kumquats, fermented preserved kumquats. I can see that weirdly and working. This is, yeah. Should? They're old, Maybe I like, but there's so much you salt. You keep saying that. Like, am I going to get sick? I don't know. If it went bad, you would see it. They smell really good. What if I put them, I was going to make like a scallion ginger sauce. What if I stir Mix them in? Mix it up. So that's fine. Oh, this is some yuzu paste. What do you paste. know? It's old. A little medicinal. Woo! I, I feel like this is where I want to be. Oh look, butter lettuce. That's also what I wanted. Well, I think the takeaway was everything in there is old. What in the world do you know? There's a cocktail at my station. Delaney. I knew you were up to no good slash everything good. Everything good. What'd you uh, make? Boulevard, yeah. Tight. Rye, Campari, sweet vermouth, orange. Thank you so Easy. much. This is awesome. What's this? <laughs> I thought there was going to be another piece of pig in there. Okay. <laughs> Show some skin. Well, I'm not going to do that personally, because that would not be appropriate. You just looked at the, <laughs> you just looked at the oven. <laughs> Open me, it says. All right. So we have strips of pig skin that are dehydrating in here, and I'm guessing I'm going to deep fry these, or I know I am. This will be fun. We can fry them and crush them up and eat them on top of our lettuce wraps. It's gonna be delicious. I'm gonna start frying pork skin. Chicharron. Smells like a pig in here. Oh, we are there, folks. We're at like 350. I'm gonna drop these in. And it's wild because you think it's not gonna do anything, it's not gonna do anything, and then all of a sudden it just starts puffing. Oh! Stand back. They're alive. And then once they stop bubbling, you take them out, drain, and then immediately with salt. We can even do a little pep. A little salt, little pep. Look, it's a nipple. Cute little nip. So I have piles of herbs, thinly sliced cukes, bib lettuce. I'm just covering these in cold paper towels and I'm gonna keep them in the fridge so they stay nice and crisp and fresh. And then, where are all the good tongs? Oh, they're there. A good tongue is a short tongue, not a long tongue, and a good tongue doesn't have clumsy rubber covers on the tips, obviously. I can't stay on the tongs that we have in the test kitchen that are like this long. I mean, ridiculous. Like, for me, the perfect tongue is like 10 or 12 inches. That's the tongue. There's a lot of lame tongs in here. Okay, them guys been marinating about an hour. Okay, so we're on high over here and medium over here. I'm gonna start the tri-tip and sirloin. These thick boys over here, so they're gonna take the longest. And that's a lot of, whoa, that's a lot of pork fat that's gonna flare up. And then we're just gonna keep flipping, flipping, flipping. I'm gonna move these over here now. It's a little bit cooler over here. Over. Look at that fat, like sizzle right there on the edge. Yum. Look at this, here, watch this roll. This is like a um, Ruby Tuesdays commercial. That's like what we are doing here in our own little way. It's cool that four hours ago, this pig was just like one beast. And it's kind of hard to look at that whole animal and see like this steak on the grill, where it is in there. But I think that's kind of what we started to do today is to understand how that all happens. Okay, I'm going on with this guy, which is gonna go pretty fast. The sirloin flap that we got off the sirloin as we we're breaking it down. <laughs> Number seven, let me guess. Call your friends, or like, have a party, or like, pig out. It's gonna say pig out. Oh, I'm not gonna even show you what it says. So let's go with that. Pig out. Okay, all of our beautiful little gems, as Lena calls them, are cooked, they're resting. Cut gems. I feel like these can like break your teeth. Mm. Oh, bite, bite. Here's the sambal, brad sambal, which, in case you missed it, is very old. Ah, I can't open it. Did you get it? We're gonna put sambal here. I did make a ginger scallion sauce, and then these are the um, citrusy fermented kumquats. They're really yummy. 
so I'm gonna stir it into my ginger scallion sauce. That's wild looking. Should we slice? So the sirloin, that's yummy. That eats kind of like a more tender pork chop. And the Denver, I have my money on this one. Mm. Let's do this one next. Chewier, but has very good flavor. This does eat sort of like skirt steak. And then the tri-tip with the big fat cap. It's like lard that melts in your mouth as you're eating. That's gold, that stuff. First, hello everyone and welcome to my <laughs> song party. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I love you all. So today I broke down a pig. What I did was take some of the like lesser known cuts of the pork that like you maybe otherwise would associate with beef and treat them as steaks. This is the Denver, so that comes from tough shoulder meat, but Why you know. Denver? I don't know. They're tough Why is in it Denver. Called should be called the Jersey steak. Though. Okay, this is our Jersey. <laughs> you think you're tough? Yeah. And then this is yep. the pork tri tip. Pork tri -tip. Tri -tip. With like Look, an amazing so fat cap. I just think what you should do is go lettuce, obviously, then rice. And then it's kind of like however you wish. Whatever you want to do. There's a lot going on here. Molly, oh, yum. Mm -hmm. Really good. I wasn't expecting to be so jazzed by the tri-tip. I've never eaten tri-tip. Tri -tip. Tri -tip. I like the sirloin, but the sirloin is like bordering on pork chop pork to chop. me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I made it clear I fucking hate pork chops. Uh, they're the worst part. But like, if I'm gonna eat a pork chop, that's the one. Do you agree with that, Chris? They're the worst part? Yeah, they're the worst. I don't yeah. want sirloin it. is the worst part. The sirloin. What? People here think they're way too I... cool for fucking pork tenderloin. Pork tenderloin is so good. I agree Wrong. that pork tenderloin sucks. If we were to put a pork chop, a tenderloin, and a pork shoulder steak in front of Delaney, blindfold him. There's no way in hell he would choose the tenderloin. I love you, Delaney. Thank you for all the cocktails. You're wrong. Pork tenderloin is the chicken breast of the pig. Ooh. No, it's the chicken tender of the chicken breast. Oh my God, it's even lower. It's lower than the breast. <laughs> it's the little strip that oh, falls off and no one cares and about. Fry your you pork guys are only living half a life. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I'm very into all of these different cuts. They're all worth seeking out on their own in place of other more popular cuts. And they're delicious and just different. It's like a different experience. And I guess the takeaway is all animals are kind of built the same way. So there's sort of all of the same cuts and steaks in every one. And today I was able to look at a whole pig, understand its anatomy, break it all down, see how all of those cuts come off of the pig, and then bring it here, cook it, and now like we're feasting on it. Yeah. Finished! The tongs on. Long tong, wrong tong, plastic tong, wrong tong. That tong, the tong, tong, tong. <laughs> oh man, so stupid. Uh, so stupid.